Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. So in this video, we're going to be installing a 6-inch PVC SDR35 drainage system, and it's going to be replacing a 4-inch corrugated system that was undersized for this job. Now, this system backs up tremendously, and I mean, more than likely, the pipe wasn't installed properly, but there is just too much water that is trying to be forced through this 4-inch line to have all of these downspouts and channel drain connected to it. So it needs a six inch main line for this. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it with that. Our main line is gonna be six inch and then we're gonna have four inch laterals connecting into that six inch. Now take a look, the pipe isn't even buried in the ground here. So I'm not sure if this popped out of the ground over time or if it was just sat like this, but let's go ahead and get started. Remember to give 811 a call before you do any excavation. That way they can come out and mark any utility lines that may be in the area. The first thing that we're going to be doing is clearing the stone out of our way and making a path for our trench. We're going to have to cut the landscaping fabric as well that's underneath the stone so that we can go ahead and dig that trench. Now, preferably, we like working in stone better than any other material, better than working in sod or astroturf. Well, astroturf's a good one too, but both astroturf and stone is a lot easier to put back in my opinion. So we would much rather work in that. Now, as you can see here, these connections are not proper the way they did this. They kind of just used a couple of cup links and downspout adapters, PVC downspout adapters to make these connections. And these were leaking terribly here. But like I stated earlier in this video, the entire system was backing up in general because this is just too much water to be forced into a four inch line. So on this particular system there is going to be four gutter downspouts two of which are super gutters and then there's also going to be a deck drain that is also going to connect into this system so that is a lot of water a lot of runoff water to be putting through a four inch line so we opted to go with a six inch main this client wanted pvc so of course we will go ahead and oblige and we will install pvc you know we install pvc dual wall corrugated systems, you know, whatever kind of pipe it is, you know, we'll lay it. So as you can see, this is our six inch PVC SDR 35. And the most time consuming and intricate part, in my opinion, when running PVC is going to be doing the intricate joints. You know, once you start on a straight run and you're, you know, putting those 10 foot sections in, it goes pretty quickly. But having to do the intricate joints and the laterals and the connections, that's what takes a lot of time. And whenever you're working with six inch pipe in general, you're gonna need more than two pairs of hands. You're gonna need a couple pairs of hands to get this job done, uh, at least in a efficient you know, time manner. I mean, you know, you can do it by yourself, but it is a lot easier when you have additional sets of hands helping you. As you can see here, Miguel's helping me install this six inch main that's gonna go to our hub here. And now this central hub is going to connect all of the four inch laterals that are going to grab the two downspouts there, as well as that deck drain is going to connect in there. So whenever you're installing PVC, there is no flex to this pipe. You know, PVC is a rigid pipe. You know, you cannot bend the pipe. So you need to, you know, measure twice, cut once, and you need to make sure that everything is lined up the way you want it to be lined up. Because if not, you know, when you start solvent welding your pieces together, if it is even off by a little bit, it's going to throw the rest of what you're doing off. So you need to make sure that, you know, everything is lined up, preferably before you solvent cement. Now, a good way to do this is obviously, you know, making all your cuts and dry fitting everything together before you solvent weld it. So that would, I would highly recommend doing that. You know, if you don't lay a lot of drainage pipe and you're not used to working with it, you know, I would dry fit everything before you start using your primer and your solvent cement. So as you can see here, I mean, it's kind of taking three of us to get this, this manifold set in properly here. And, you know, we want to connect both of these leaf filters, these downspout leaf filters into our uh, manifold here uh, simultaneously connecting the channel drain in as well because this is all glued together this is all one piece now you, you didn't get to see it but off camera we did dry fit a lot of this to make sure that it was all going to line up properly um, and then we went ahead and we marked 
uh, on certain areas of the fittings a little line so we know exactly you know where we're going to glue that and you know once we have it all dry fitted and we have it the way we want it then we went ahead and we solvent welded everything together and then we put it in place so i would highly recommend that you do that if you don't work with pvc a lot and you're going to be a you know a diyer and installing your own drainage system and you choose to use pvc i would highly recommend that you dry fit it so and another thing too is you know uh, i see videos on youtube where Sometimes guys will just push the fittings together and they won't solvent weld them together. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless unless it's a gasketed system. You know, if you're using gasketed SDR35, then that's a different story entirely because you got the, the e, EPDM rubber gasket. Uh, but if it's a solvent welded system, you know, you really should prime it and, and solvent weld it together. You know, I mean, that's, that, that's kind of the whole point of it. That's going to keep those, those fittings from pushing out of the pipe over time with ground movement as well as it's going to help stop root intrusion into the joints now that's not to say that roots still won't find their way in because uh, surprisingly roots can still get in to a solvent welded system uh they 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 they, they find their way in i mean the root starts off you know about as thin as a strand of hair and it will start to push into that joint and eventually, as the as the root grows, it will start to separate the joint and, and it will get into the pipe. I mean, it takes a long time, but it does happen. So it, it really doesn't matter what kind of system you're using. It, roots will get in eventually if there's a lot of roots in the area. If you're going past an oak tree or arbor vitaes or maple trees, cypress trees, you know, something with, with intense roots, eventually they will get in. And if they don't get into the pipe by the joint if they start wrapping around the pipe which usually they do they slowly can crush it down and it doesn't matter what kind of pipe you're using i mean even cast iron can get can get cracked and crushed down from an intensive root system but we're going to be discharging this system out to the lake as you can see here we got a a footer of concrete that we have to go underneath here for that wall and you know like i said once we start laying the straight pipe it, it goes pretty quickly um we are going to have to grab up two more lateral lines here though. So we have a downspout that's going to be on this pool house. And then we have another super downspout that's a little bit further up here. And we'll, I'll be getting to that in a minute. So, you know, the guys are up there working, trying to figure out this lateral here. And we're just going to connect that one straight into the Y. So we're not going to be using a combination Y on this one. Uh, whenever you can connect directly into a Y like that without using a combination, that's always the best way to go. Uh, that gives the water the best path with least resistance into your main line, and it allows it to, to flow in smooth. But if you have to use a combination, you know, either a 45 or a 22 on that Y, obviously that's not a big deal. That allows the water to enter into the main line smooth as well. But you, you can just see here, just in general, working with PVC is a lot more labor intensive. You know, it takes a lot more hands on that material to be able to cut it, maneuver it, put it into place, prime it, you know, solvent weld it. It's just a lot more labor intensive to lay this pipe. Now, whenever you are installing a PVC system, you know, keep in mind, you still want a flat bottom trench. I mean, a flat bottom trench is important with any type of pipe that you're going to lay. Uh, just because PVC is rigid, you know, people think, well, the trench doesn't have to be, you know, dug perfectly flat on the bottom because, you know, it's PVC, it's, it's, it's rigid pipe. It's not going to take the shape of a belly in the trench. Well, you'd be surprised. It actually can. So when it, let's say you're laying that pipe and your trench is in a flat bottom trench and there's a belly in there. Now, once you start to backfill, if that belly doesn't get filled up completely with dirt and packed in, uh, the dirt that gets put on top of that PVC will actually weigh the pipe down over time and the pipe will take the shape of that belly. I mean, even PVC, you know, it will flex over time and it could flex to the point of actually breaking or cracking. So that's another possibility and I've seen that out, out in the field as well. So, you know, you want to make sure that the pipe is laying flat on the bottom of that trench so it is supported all the way through and through. Now, as you can see, we're pretty deep at this point here. You know, we're roughly uh, to our knees. 
So that Y connection has to be angled up. And then we're going to go ahead and throw our 45 on there to make our combination Y so we can pick up this last downspout. So it's always good when you can drop a lateral into a main line like this because that just allows that water to flow through quickly. Now, here's a good shot at drawing the lines on those fittings. So before we used our primer and solvent cement, we dry fitted everything together. We got it fitted how we wanted it. And then we just used a Sharpie to score a couple of lines across there. That way you have the angles to your combination Y that, you know, the 45 that goes onto that Y connection so that everything is straight the way you want it. Because the last thing you want to do is dry fit it all together and it all fits perfect. You have it exactly how you want it. And then when you take that dry fit apart to go ahead and solvent cement it, you know, when you're, you're in the process of gluing those fittings to the pipe together, you know, your, your angles get kind of thrown off because you don't want to be thrown off at all. Because like I said earlier, you know, it's, it, it's rigid pipe. It's not going to give it all, you know, you don't want to flex the pipe. So it's always a good idea to do those little lines. That way, you know, exactly the angles that you want those fittings to be when you go ahead and prime it and glue them together. That way there's no messing around with it. So that's just a little tip. Now we did put a clean out in the middle of this run. I mean, each one of those downspouts obviously has the FDM leaf filter clean out so you can access it at all those points. But we figure you might as well just put a, you know, a mainline clean out on that six inch just in case it ever does have to be accessed. It's always good to have that, you know, somewhere in the middle of the run. And we like to do that on the larger systems. You know, we like to put a clean out somewhere on the middle of the run. We've started doing that a lot more now, even though you could access it, like I said, from all of those laterals, but it makes it a little bit easier for the homeowner to clean it out. Cause you know, we understand they don't have all the tools, you know, that we have obviously in our toolbox, you know, we have snake cables, jetters, you know, we have all kinds of stuff. Uh, the average homeowner usually only has a garden hose that he, they can, you know, flush the line out if necessary. Uh, but we're pretty confident, you know, with our, our systems here that pretty much any debris that gets into here is going to flow right through it. I mean, this is a smooth interior pipe, obviously, because it's PVC. So, you know, more than likely any debris that does make it past those leaf filters is going to just flow right through this pipe, especially on heavy rain events that we get down here in Florida. Uh, I mean, the FDM leaf filters alone are, they stop, I mean, I would say about 95% of the material that's going to even get in there. So, I mean, I would highly recommend putting those on any kind of drainage system that you're going to, you're going to have any kind of roof runoff system. You really should just put those leaf filters on it. It just makes it so much easier. And not only that, but it creates a good access point. But, you know, if you want to go ahead and just use the, the, the traditional, uh, vented Y clean out on the side, you know, you can do that as well. Uh, but we just like this because it stops all that organic debris from getting in there. So it, it, it just makes maintenance a lot easier on the system for the homeowner in our opinion. So, but as you can see here, we, we pretty much got it all, you know, fixed up, got it all cleaned up. Now just taking some video showing the job site here, all done showing the size of the downspouts. Now we're going to have this just straight piped out to the retention pond. We're going to stop, you know, roughly about, you know, 15, 20 feet from the pond. That way that water can kind of disperse and percolate out through the grass before it gets to the pond. And we're not going to put any kind of critter guard or anything like that on the end of the pipe. To be honest with you, we don't really worry about it because we get so much rain here that anything that's going to live in that pipe they're not going to be in there for much longer when the first heavy rain comes through. I mean, it's going to just blow everything that's in that pipe out of it. Uh, uh, not to mention, I mean, most of the critter guards that I see on the market, uh, I mean, uh, your typical mouse can easily squeeze through that. I mean, a mouse can squeeze, if, if a mouse can squeeze its head through something, it can get the rest of its body through it. Um, so, I really don't see a point unless you're going to put maybe some kind of chicken wire mesh on the end of the pipe. But if you're not putting leaf filter clean outs, then that's going to basically catch all your leaves and organic material at the very end of the pipe. If you put some sort of chicken wire mesh on the end to keep stuff out of the pipe. So you, there's a pro and con to everything. 
that you do. So basically, we just don't worry about it because we know that as soon as the first heavy rain hits, that's it. Anything in that pipe is coming out. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you gained a little bit of knowledge from watching it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. It really supports us. It supports the channel. We got a lot more videos in the works on the way. I've been extremely busy, so bear with me, but we are going to be getting those videos out. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off. Thank you.